Hello students, this is Mr. Fugay, and welcome to our second part of our first lesson in geometry about points, lines, and in this video we're going to specifically talk about angles which are formed by those building blocks of points and lines. So, a couple things, if you haven't watched part one and taken a look at points and lines through math antics and also through my video if you did it in class or online, make sure you go back and do that first. And for this video we also have an overview with math antics uh, the first like four minutes or so where it gives a visualization and an overview of what I'm going to be talking about in this video. With that being said, let's talk about some of those terms. So we start with parallel, which you've probably heard about, especially in Algebra 1 when you talked about parallel lines on the coordinate plane. So what we're basically going to leave it at here in Geo is that it's two or more lines that do not intersect. So with that being said, I'm going to draw two points up here on the screen. And I'm going to use that cursive notation that I talked about in the first video. So line L in red, line M in blue. Now, without any sort of confirmation, I'm looking at this, how do I know they're parallel? If I were to extend these out for a million units, maybe M eventually creeps up and crosses L. We don't know that for sure. And so what we typically do for parallel is we are either going to declare, hey, these are parallel, or a symbol may be used. Typically this symbol, which maybe you think of as the greater than symbol, but it's kind of a this little carrot symbol, is what we're going to use to confirm that, hey, these are definitely parallel and your eyes are not deceiving you. So keep that in mind. Another symbol we need to think about is when we are writing out line L is parallel to line M. We can obviously write those words out, but typically what we will see in other places is this double line symbol. That is a mathematical symbol, meaning is parallel to. So that's how you would read this statement. Line L is parallel to line M. Now the only not example, which we're not really going to get into because we're focusing more on 2D geometry, but in a three-dimensional world that we live in, if two things don't cross each other, does not mean they are parallel. So an example which this picture is not going to do the best justice is if you have a pencil and a pen in your hand, and you hold that pencil so that to your perspective it is going left and right, and then you hold another pencil, not touching the other one, that's coming towards you, like the eraser is pointing at your face, those two lines are not parallel because they are not going in the same direction. They are not lying on the same two-dimensional flat surface. So basically a way I think about it is parallel lines are lines that don't intersect but have to be drawn on the same plane, meaning same table, same paper, same whiteboard. So that's how I keep that in mind. Um, moving next, though, what happens when they are not parallel? So, well, that means that they are going to cross each other. And where they cross, the overlap of where they cross, we call that our intersection. So in this now drawing, we have line L and line M, but this time they cross. Now, at that place, at that meeting spot, that spot is a point. And what we learned back in the first video is that over a point, we can place a dot and then give its name any sort of capital letter. In this case, I chose W. So what I would now be able to communicate is say that point W is the intersection of lines L and M. So we use points, and lines can be intersections too, but in this example, we're looking at a point being where the overlap is occurring when two lines are on top of each other. And there's not really any non-examples of this we're going to discuss, so we're going to leave that next cell blank. Now, the big definition in this video that we're going to spend the most time focusing on is the word angle. So an angle, as described in the Math Antics video, can be measured by the amount of space between two segments or rays. In this case, I'm going to say an angle is two rays that share a common endpoint. So you'll see that I have ray RB here on the screen. If I can find my mouse to show you, there it is. It starts at R, goes in the direction of B. And then my other ray is R, and then you can either call it RH or RS, this black ray going this direction. Notice that they both have a common endpoint R, and this common endpoint we're going to be calling that our vertex. The rays are going to be referred to as our side. So RB is a side, and RS is going to be a side. Now when we label this, there are a lot of different ways to label this, but there's one thing that must be true, and that is that all of these different ways I just wrote down here, SRB, HRB, BRH, BRS, they all have one major thing in common. The middle letter is R. So when you label an angle, we typically like to use three letters, the middle letter being the vertex, 
And then the first and the last letters should be points coming from either side. So S, B, or H, B, or B, H, or B, S. Those are all the combinations of ways I can label this angle. Now, instead of using points to label it, sometimes you will see in diagrams that you'll see the arc symbol right here, and you will see a two. Now, notice there's no degree symbol, so I'm not saying that this angle is two degrees. We'll talk about angle measures in a later video and lesson. But in this case, what we're going is we're going to call this angle angle two. So if you don't have points, or sometimes the points will be drawn, and we still, for communication purposes, put a number here, that's going to be kind of our, our safe route here in this situation. Now, there are some non-examples that we need to talk about. In this case, we have SHR, HRS, and then angle R. All right, well, we'll come back to that one in a minute. But in these first two, I want you to think about, all right, well, the big issue in this first one is that the middle letter is not R. So we have to have that vertex in the middle. So that's the reason this one doesn't work. For the second one, R is in the middle, but there's an issue. The H and the S that I chose are actually on the same ray or the same side. So that's going to be an issue. So typically the way I write this is you start on one ray and you pick a point, you hit your vertex next, and then you pick another point over here. So that's why this one fails. Now, angle R is a tough one because you'll see in this course that I'll sometimes use just the vertex. And in this very specific example, that's okay. But if I were to have, let's say up here, this drawing here for intersection, you'll see I have a W there. If I say, hey guys, let's look at angle W. Which angle am I actually talking about? Am I talking about the one on the bottom, the one at the top, left? It's not specific enough. So in this very specific example that I have circling here, yeah, angle R gets away with it. Because if I say angle R, you know which angle I'm referring to. But up here, if I said angle W, that does not work. So here are my non-example kind of explanations. And you'll see I wrote there, only use when one angle has a vertex R. If there's a second angle with a vertex R, no go. Do not use that. So better be safe than sorry, but I'm just letting you know that is a common mistake that students make. All right, we have four more definitions to go. And these next couple um, you've pr definitely seen in your other courses throughout the years, so we're going to go through them fairly quickly. A right angle is a name of an angle that has a specific measure of 90 degrees. So you look at this drawing, okay, we have an angle here. Do I know this is 90 degrees? Well, it would be helpful if we had maybe a symbol that told us that. And that square symbol is going to ensure us, guarantee that the angle is 90. Because without it, maybe it's 89 degrees. Maybe it's 91 degrees. We don't know that. So that's why the square symbol is so helpful. Now, a common mistake students will make here is they'll say, oh, well, look over here. I have angle one and angle two, and they must be right angles. Well, together they might be a right angle, but specifically individually, angle one is not 90, angle two is not 90. So these are two angles that add up to 90, and we have a different name for that. We'll talk about that in a couple lessons as well. Now, one more thing about intersections we've been talking about here is that when two lines intersect, we call that point the intersection. But specifically, when we want to talk about angles that form 90 degrees, we're going to also talk about the word perpendicular. Now, right angle and perpendicular are very synonymous with each other. They're very interchangeable with one another. A right angle usually, is when we say that, we're talking about the measure of the angle. And when I talk about perpendicular, I typically use this when I talk about the segments being 90 degrees, meaning line L and line M are perpendicular. So I, I wouldn't say line L and line M are right angles. It's not wrong to say that, but it's kind of not a typical way of communicating. So when we refer to the segments or the lines intersecting at a 90 degree angle, we will usually say they are perpendicular. So we'll put the right angle symbol there. And this symbol right here means is perpendicular to. So the way I would read this statement out is line L is perpendicular to line M. Now, just be careful with perpendicular because here I have a two lines intersecting once again, and I have an angle drawn here, but notice it's not the right angle symbol. And if the right angle symbol is not there, I cannot just assume that it's 90 degrees. So this is not 90 degrees. Even if it looked like it was 90 degrees, we need either. We have to only can assume this when we are told directly that it's perpendicular, like it is over here, or 
if the right angle symbol is present. Either one of those two things, I'll be okay with this, but unless you see one of those two statements given to you, never assume that. Now, angles can't just be 90 degrees. They can be less than 90, and they can be greater than 90. And so we have terms for those as well, and you're probably familiar with these, acute and obtuse angles, and here's what they look like. So acute is anything between 0 and 90, not including 0, not including 90, and obtuse is anything between 90 and 180. Once again, non-inclusive. We do have names for angles that are, well, 0 is just not anything, and 180 is called a straight angle, which we'll talk about later. All right, we're down to our last definition in this video, and that is the term adjacent. So when we talk about adjacent, I informally will always say this means next to in geometry. So the word adjacent and the term next to, they kind of mean the same thing. Now, in order for angles to be adjacent, we have to create sort of a checklist here. They have to share a vertex, they have to share a side, and they cannot overlap. So in order for two angles to be next to each other, these three criteria must be in place. So let's walk through that real quick. So in this case, I'm making a claim that angle MAT, that's the one in red here, is adjacent to angle TAH, that's the one here in black. So the way I'm going to check this off is I'm going to go first and say, well, do both of these angles have the same vertex? And you'll notice that the middle letter for both of these is A. So yes, they both have vertex A, so check. Do they share a side? Well, the side that I see that they both have right here is this ray down the middle called ray AT. So yes, they both share ray AT, so they do share a side. Now in terms of overlapping, the best way to do this is to draw the little arc symbol for each of these and basically look to see are those arcs on top of one another. And you see that the red is here, the black is here, they are next to each other, but not on top of each other. So we would say they do not overlap. And so let's wrap up with two non-examples here where this is going to fail. So in this first example up top here, you'll see that angle 2 has its vertex down here at the bottom, and angle 1 has its vertex up top. So while they do share a side, the middle side there, they do not overlap each other, they have different vertices, and so this is going to be a failure. And then this last one down here is a very common mistake. Students will say MAT, that's the red angle, and angle MAH are adjacent. And you'll say, well, they have the same vertex. They share the side AM, but you'll notice that the orange angle overlaps or goes on top of this red angle. And so we have to be careful with our naming convention here that MAT and MAT overlap. Sorry, that should say MAH. This should be an H right here. So MAT and MAH overlap, and that is where we're going to run into a failure. So that will conclude video number two in this lesson on geometry vocab. I hope you've enjoyed, and have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you for watching.